So to begin with the model, we will create some model files. Okay, let's see. Oh no, this one. Okay, so I'm gonna create file called models.py and another file called model dispatcher. So I have models and model dispatcher dot py and we can define our model uh, models and models dot py. So there's a <clears throat> PyTorch uh, Python library and uh, it has a lot of pre-trained models so we are also not going to uh, do it from scratch obviously um, we're just going to use one of the pre-trained models so you can install it using pre-trained models pip install, pip install pre-trained models so what you have here is as you can see you import the pre-trained models and you have a lot of different uh, pre-trained models and uh, trained on uh, mostly ImageNet dataset. So you can just load it like this. So you have a model name and uh, you get the model like this and you specify um, what you want to be uh, loaded with, what kind of uh, pre-trained weights. So most of them are ImageNet and you can also pass none if you don't want uh, it to be uh, with uh, pre-trained weights and uh, you can just do eval and then it gives you the classes. So here you see that num classes is 1000. In our case, it's a multi-label classification problem. So let's look, let's look at uh, some of the models here. So I, I will start with the small model like uh, ResNet 34. So I'm, I'm looking for ResNet and um, or we can we can just look at any kind of uh, model so we we'll, we can look at rest next and um, so um here we have rest next let's see if we can find okay it's probably in torch vision models um so here we have yeah we have resnet 34 and uh, here so it loads model dot resnet 34 pre-trained false and then if you have the pre-trained image net then it downloads and loads the uh, weights for it so models dot resnet okay let's see if we can find it Inception v3, Lensnet, Alexnet. I am um, trying to find the definition of it. ResNet 34. Why is models uh, imported somewhere? Okay, it starts vision models. Um, yeah i think that's fine uh, so you have this function modify resnets so what's it doing here it's uh, changing the last linear layer so last linear instead of fc which is used in torch vision and uh, you also have this uh, function called features that generates the features and then forward function changes a bit so what we need to do is we need to do something similar to this one and implementing it is, is quite easy if you use pre-trained models so let's let's take a look how we can implement this model uh resnet 34 for our specific problem 
So you import pre-trained models and uh, you define a new class. So let's call it um, ResNet 34. Yeah, why not? Which imports from torch.nn as nn and here you have nn.module so just like how every model is defined in pytorch init and self comma uh, let's leave it itself and you need to say it's a super and inherit from self press net 34 comma self dot underscore underscore in it so whenever you define touch models and you inherit from this module so now we have to have a model a kind of a base model and we say okay pre-trained models uh, dot dict resnet 34 and it also takes a parameter called pre-trained right <clears throat> so I'm gonna say okay if pre-trained is true then pre-trained equal to image net otherwise um, we don't load the pre-trained weight that we need for model testing else pre-trained is none okay so you have that and uh we can also check this so let's uh try to print it let me open a terminal here okay so i'll or i can just use jupyter notebook for this purpose so i'm gonna rename this to dataset view and I'm gonna create a new one uh, where I import pre-trained models and I say my model is this one so let's look at the model itself so it has a 2d convolutional layer batch norm it's a big model and you guys know about it so I'm basically interested in the final part so in the last linear the final layer if you use torch vision then you have fc if you use pre-trained models and you have last linear you have uh, input features 512 and output features 1000 so we need to change that so to change that uh, we go back here and define a few extra layers l0 layer 0 let's say and then dot linear layer uh, which has 512 inputs and 168 outputs and similarly we have l1 and l2 and these will contain 11 and 7 so now why 168 11 and 7 because there are 168 graphemes and um, 11 vowel and for 7 for consonants and um, then we can write a forward function for this def forward self comma x that takes a batch and you have batch size and then channels you don't need height and width you don't need 
and that's your x dot shape and x becomes equal to um, self dot model dot features so we saw this there is a features function so we just extract the features and then we apply uh, adaptive average pooling so from torch dot nn import functional as f and here we have um dot adaptive average pooling uh, in two dimensions and that will take x the features and um, output size is one um, and you reshape it to batch size minus one and once you have that you can say l0 is self dot l0 x and similarly l1 and l2 sorry l1 um and you return l0 l1 and l2 okay so that's your model but you're missing something you're missing pre-trained okay um so this is argument used here and this is mm, no, this is not not very complicated if you if you look at notebooks and discussions in uh, this challenge you will find that a lot of people have implemented the same way uh i was implementing it a bit differently so what I was doing was to take the sole ResNet class and just modify features and forward here. And you can also do that. Uh, but you see like this is a much simpler way to implement the model. And uh, uh, the thing is, uh, yeah, my one of my teammates from this competition, he told me like, okay, this is much better way. So I'll use this way instead of the other one. So uh, this supports um, all kinds of image sizes. Um, and um, next thing that we need to do now is go to our model dispatcher. And here I say import models. And I create a dictionary that dispatches the model and why it's useful I will come to that later so I say okay resnet 34 and that's models dot resnet 34 okay um, so we are done with this now we can also check if this works so I'm just gonna go back to my notebook import uh, so I'm, I'm gonna say okay take this part from here add it here from model dispatcher import model dispatcher we have that and I say model is model this Batcher ResNet 34 pre trained equal to false and it got a unexpected keyword argument. Okay, so let's see. Okay, yeah, sure. This should come here and now we need to restart the kernel so. Uh, let's try it again okay something is wrong 
of course I changed the mo model name the class name so I need to fix that um, okay okay cool so we are here now this is our SNA 34 for this specific problem and you see like there is L0, L1 and L2 layers uh, after the last linear and you have 512, 512, 512 and output 168, 11 and 7. So you are good to go to train. So now we can finally create our training file called train.py and we can start coding uh, the training and validation loops which is also quite easy quite simple if you have done it a few times you will know it's very easy so a few things that I need to define uh, that I want to define all the time when I start with the training file is what kind of device I'm using so where is my training folds CSV file uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, get these values from um, environment variables so I will import OS I will also import AST uh, I will tell you why and image height it's also from environment variable same for image width and same for number of epochs I want same for batch size for training batch size for testing um, and then I also want model mean model standard division training folds validation folds and the model that i want to use so i'm just a bit lazy with so this becomes my image width and then uh, this one was um, we can we can call it epox so that's my epox so now I have training batch size and test batch size and uh, we can do um, model mean So, and model std and this won't be int so here I use literal eval so what it does is like your environment variables are strings and this is going to be a string of tuples or list so it's just going to convert it to from stringified list to a normal list that's what it does and then um, I need training folds and validation folds and I also want base model and the same thing goes for training and validation folds I have to use ast.literal eval instead of int it's not an int and here so we have completed the first part where we have to find everything that we want the parameters to train the model and now we can say okay uh, we can start with writing the training and validation loop so Um, you can start with the main function let's call it just main 
and what it does is it's the main function that's called when you call the script so i say model is um, from models import sorry from model dispatcher import model dispatcher so i have that and i can just write here okay uh, model is model dispatcher your base model and pre-trained equal to true because it's a training loop model dot to device okay so we got this now we need training and validation data sets right so train data set is uh, another import from data set import uh, bengali data set train so train data set it will be bengali data set train and here you have folds so which are your training folds uh, image height is image height the image uh, height that you wanted after resize image width and you have mean image mean where is it <laughs> image so what did i call it model mean sorry so model mean and send deviation equal to model std so we have all these things here and now we create a data loader for training data set train loader is now i need to import torch import torch Torch dot utils dot um, data dot data loader. Where is your data loader object? And uh, here we want data set. So that's your train data set. And batch size is train batch size. Um, then you have shuffle. So for training or even for validation you can use shuffle doesn't matter but don't use it for uh, testing obvious why is it getting converted to turtle true uh, okay and num workers so i want i want four workers not many and i'm gonna copy this whole thing here and do the same for validation set so i'm gonna say okay valid data set so this is now incorrect so this is just using train oh damn i have shouldn't have done that okay no worries we have to do it manually so valid data set and then folds will be validation folds everything else remains the same and here you change it to valid loader and this will be valid data set and validation batch size what did i call it uh, valid batch size sorry test batch size so i'll just do test batch size shuffle true false doesn't matter because uh, the uh, data set object is returning the labels even for validation so it doesn't matter but i'm just gonna set it to false um, the next thing you want to have is an optimizer 
optimizer and that's your uh, I'm just going to use Adam optimizer so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna train on all parameters and learning rate set it to 1e minus 4 so I'm using all the parameters but you can also experiment with that and you can also set a differential learning rate for different layers uh, you also probably need a scheduler and when you use scheduler from torch you have to remember like some schedulers you need to step after every batch some after every epoch so that's very important keep that in mind so when i want scheduler i also have to import uh lr scheduler or i can just do torch dot optim dot lr scheduler dot uh, so now what what do i want so i want reduce lr on plateau so that's let's say uh, when it's plateauing um on my model scores then i reduce the learning rate so here this takes optimizer as an input so mode now mode can be max or min if you if you want to like uh, go for loss then it should be min i'm putting it to max because we will see the recall score and based on that we will say okay reduce the learning rate patients five and a factor reduce it by a factor of 0 0.3 <clears throat> i think that's good enough so we have this and um, let's set verbose to true <clears throat> okay great so we got that now time comes for training the model but before that there is one more thing uh, if you have <coughs> sorry if you have multiple gpus in your system you can convert your model to uh, data parallel and uh, that's gonna make uh, stuff fast so i'm just gonna say if torch.cuda dot device count is greater than where did I go? Torch.cuda.device count is greater than one. Then my model is nn.data parallel. Okay, I did not import this. So import torch.nn as an and nn.data parallel let's see yeah okay great now so you have that and now um, there's a lot of different things that you want to do here uh, I'm not going to show everything uh, you can also have a early stopping so uh, I'm not gonna implement early stopping in this in, in this video but you can easily do that early stopping then PyTorch and it's quite simple and easy let's say this one yeah okay so you can use this this uh, early stopping class um, so if you go here yeah so you can use this class uh, yeah, and uh, I'm also using a modification of this all the time. Um, so, but we are not going to do it in this video. I'll probably make another video for only early stopping and how you can create a better early stopping. So now we are ready to train our model. Uh, so I'm gonna say log is now. Let's not say that. So. We can just have a train function and a validation score comes from a evaluate function and scheduler now the uh, 
reduce LR on plateau should go here. Step, val score. Okay. Um, and you can also save the model here if you want. So <clears throat> let's see. And then you also need if uh, main. then run the main function right now we can now we have to write train and evaluate loops so okay let's also save the model here torch dot save model dot state dict and name of your model so f string okay not not this one and uh, here you can say um, base model underscore validation false zero because it's uh, always a list. All of them are lists. Um, dot, uh, I don't know, on pickle h5, whatever. That's it dot bin yeah let's do that so you save with the base model name and the fold so i can also do underscore fold one fold two fold three five zero and now we have to implement the training loop interesting part shouldn't take much time um and there's also a lot of cool things that you can do there but we are not going to do a lot of cool things in this video. So you have training loop. Now, what do you expect from training loop? You get a data set and a data loader. And you want the model, you want optimizer, you want, you don't want scheduler because sometimes you want scheduler. If you want, if you want to use a different scheduler, probably you want the scheduler here not uh, after the loop and i think that's it that's all you need so now i can do for ah first of all i have to set the model in train mode so now i can do for batch index comma d data set in enumerate and here i can have data loader I can also add TQDM here to see the progress and total number of elements here will be uh, len of dataset divided by the data loader dot batch size and you need to take in otherwise it's going to complain um so you have that now we extract all the information from the data set that we created earlier so we have we have image we have graphene we have oval we have consonant right so image grapheme underscore root and then you have Vowel diacritic and you have consonant diacritic right so you got everything and now we have to uh, put it to our CUDA device so you can say okay image is image dot to device and uh, this type here should be the same as before d type is torch dot float right and you need for others so now your type is long for all these and one graphene root and the same ones so just copy paste 
Okay. Cool, we got that. Now the next step is to do nothing but just to train the model. So your outputs are uh, model image, right? And one thing you have to make sure, like when you go to your model, so your first output is grapheme, then it's vowel, then it's consonant. So try to maintain the order, otherwise it's going to be difficult. So it's gonna give you some wrong loss. So you got the outputs and then your loss is some loss function. Right. Let's do one thing here to keep it simple. I'll just make it min. Okay. And Okay, so loss function and loss function should take your output and target. Now we don't have target, so we make targets. Let's grapheme root, vowel, and consonant. Order is important. Uh, now, uh, what we can do is we can do loss dot backward and we can also step the optimizer and we have to zero grad the optimizer so we should have done that before the model so optimizer dot zero grad okay so we are done um <clears throat> Here is your loss, loss fn not implemented yet, and uh, that's all you need. You don't want to return anything, and it's done, it's done. And now you want to do the same thing, oh, not so much, same thing for evaluate. So I'm just gonna copy paste, and this will be evaluate. Now, evaluate doesn't expect optimizer and model is set to eval mode uh, everything else remains the same except we don't need to do this we don't we can we have to do this we don't need to do this we don't need to do this so i'll say final loss is equal to zero and i can just counter equal to counter plus one and uh counter is zero and here i can do okay um final loss plus equal to loss and return final loss divided by counter so that's the mean loss average loss so I've done it in a very simple way. Uh, it's better if you use the actual metric of this competition after and, and, and the loss too. So that will give you a much better view of what's happening with your model. So now we write the loss function and loss function is also quite easy. So we are not going to do anything very complicated here. So we have outputs, we have targets, and I'm gonna say 01, 02, 03 is my output. The three outputs, grapheme, vowel, consonant, and same for targets, T1, T2, T3. That's my targets. Right. And then loss one is uh, just gonna calculate cross entropy loss. So one comma T1, that's your L1. And you just say, okay, I'm gonna copy paste two and three. And here you have three, you have two. And then you return 
L1 plus L2 plus L3 divided by 3. Average loss. So you can also do a weighted averaging of these losses probably that gives you better results but I won't know. And um, got outputs and targets. Um, everything looks good to me here. So we can probably try to train our model and see that we have a lot of errors. So let's see. But to train the model, I'm going to create a, another script, a bash script, run.sh. So here in this script, I'm going to define certain things that are needed to train the model. And why I do that? I mean, the thing is, it becomes easier, you know, when you want to train multiple models, it's very easy. So I have CUDA visible devices that says, okay, how many devices are visible? So I have two GPUs. So I'm using 0 comma one. If you, even, even if you have multiple GPUs, you want to use only a few of them or some selected ones, you can just define here and export image height. That's 137. Uh, and then you have export image width. So all those things that you defined in two, sorry, 236 uh, in your training script. So export epoch is equal to, I say 50. Uh, then you have export train batch size. So let's say 64. I don't know if it's going to fit, but let's start with that. And then you have test batch size. So you can put something small. Uh, export model mean. And that's now a string. And export model standard deviation. That's also a string. So we'll come to that and now you're ready to train the model so before training the model you also need to specify what folds you want to train on so you can say export training folds is 0 1 2 and 3 and export validation folds equal to just four so if your folds are zero one two three training for validation it should be four and then you do python train.py and now you copy paste two three four five so you don't have to come back to your script and run it several times you can just do it from here so zero one two three then it's four, and this is three. Then it's uh, zero, one, two, four is three, and then zero, one, four, three, two, and zero, um, four, two, three, and one, and four, one, two, three, and zero. So it's going to train all the different folds and going to save the model for you. And we're missing these values. So I'm just going to copy paste from here. So these were the means. And uh, these were standard deviations. Okay. So now uh, we have to hope that it works. So let's start a terminal here. Okay. And we do sh run.sh. Can't open run.sh. Why? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because it's in SRC. Run.sh. So let's let's see if it trains. No, it doesn't. It doesn't because of a reason uh, we didn't define base model. So here define base model 
to ResNet 34 because that's the only model we have implemented till now. So you define that. And uh, let's try running it again. Let's see what happens now. We did another mistake um, in train.py when we were defining the model. Not everything is int. So it's like this. Uh, let's, let's just recheck. Everything else is okay. We didn't define this one. So I'm gonna say export training full CSV is input slash train false.csv the file that we created earlier and now run it again <clears throat> okay so let's see what's happening in the end Okay, so yeah, it should be name, <laughs> not in it, and uh, clear, run. So now it's downloading the pre-trained model. So that happens only once. If you already have it in the cache, it's going to use that. So uh, init missing one required positional argument module. So it seems like data parallel didn't work. Uh, and it's uh, because we didn't supply it with an argument. So we want model. <laughs> okay. Run.sh. train oh obviously so we created a train and evaluate but we have to we have to supply the arguments right so data set data loader model optimizer so train data set train data loader model optimizer okay and for same for evaluate so valid data set valid data loader and model okay i really hope this works this time tkdm tkdm is not defined i should i should be using better id <laughs> from TQDM import TQDM. Okay, so now uh, it went to the model part and it gave me an error. Same device. The device one does not equal zero. Okay. Let me get rid of data parallel. So I'm just going to say, okay, zero. And this should work. Yeah. Okay. So this is working fine. Seems like it will take some time to train. And we can also see that how much memory is being used, 2485, which is quite low. So I'm using only 3.5 GB memory, so I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to increase the training batch size to 128 yeah, i think it can fit uh, 
and then I run it again so it's working fine and now using the same amount of memory and not a lot let's see if we can fit more image height image mean run train bed size 256 resnet 34 and okay so now we have to oh okay no i was looking at it wrong so i have to check it again so now i'm using 7.8 gigs or 8 gigs of memory almost so yeah that looks fine it should complete in five minutes so the next part is now writing a kernel for the inference so uh, we need to wait for model and let's look at it in the next part how to create uh, the inference kernel but before moving to the next part uh, I want to explain why I did it this way so the reason is pretty simple you have the model mean and standard deviation the name of the model and all the parameters that you can adjust in one single script and all you have to do now is to create different model definitions so you can just say okay i want resnet 50 so blah 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 models dot resnet 50 whatever and then you go to models file and implement resnet 50 here or you can you can just choose any model you want to implement so it becomes very simple and easy to train multiple models just by changing one uh, line of code in uh, run.sh and that's that's pretty useful and this is like this is doing all the training for you and if you're familiar with kaggle api so you can also like in the end you can uh, move the files to a different folders the dot bin files that are created create a kaggle data set create and create a data set and uh, you can just automate uh, from uh, model training to uploading your models on uh, kaggle data sets once that's done the next step is is obviously manual so you have to go and create a kernel and use use that data set to generate predictions on the test set so we are going to look at it in the next one next part so um for inference so now you have to go to kaggle to this competition so till now I assume that you have trained your models <laughs> uh, it's going to take a while to train the model by the way so I'm gonna choose GPU here and create a Python notebook so let's let's do that um, now we need a lot of things here so first of all you need we are using pre-trained models so pre-trained models is not installed import pre-trained models not installed so you need to um, you need to add it to your kernel so I, I have shared pre-trained models um, and you can just add this one so let's add and then you wait okay it's done so now we can import this and uh, pre-trained models is dot dot slash input slash 
pre-trained models slash pre-trained models by touchmaster and now you do sys dot path dot insert so that this just adds to your uh, python path so now it will be able to find pre-trained models so pre-trained models and yeah it will work now you need some other imports so import glob import torch import alvimentations import pandas so it's just better to import everything beforehand import numpy as an np so you need tqdm for the cool progress bar tqdm and you need from pl import image import job lib import club we probably don't okay i'm doing it again uh i think that's good enough um from torch.n import torch.nn as an n and from torch.nn import functional as f okay then we define a few things like test batch size you need to make sure you don't use a very large batch size if it doesn't fit in memory then uh, you will have problems so the model will crash you will not know why so better to use a smaller batch size or make it as big as possible uh, till it doesn't fail you need model mean model standard deviation so i just copied it from there and uh, we need image height now it should be the same as what you use during training so 137 mg width is 236 and device is cuda okay so we did all the imports and uh, we have uh, all the variables and now we need we need our model so there are there is a much better way of doing it i've explained it in other, another video how you can create a much cleaner uh, uh, how you can create a much cleaner file for uh, inferencing but here I'm just gonna do it fast so I copy the model and I paste it here so you don't need to do anything else right and then you say okay my model is or do you need anything else yes of course you need the data set so go to data set so here is your training data set class so copy it and paste it here and now a lot of things are not available obviously so you don't have that um, so here also like uh, you have to do it in a different way so you cannot use job loop so we'll look at that uh, you don't need this it's always just we don't have these values uh, we don't need false but instead of false we need a data frame image height width mean standard deviation is fine so your you don't need this you don't need this it's it's quite custom so self dot image id is df dot image id dot values so what's happening here is uh, we are loading the whole data frame we're passing in the data frame uh, in this Bengali dataset test class and self dot img array I will say so now this is my full values 
Uh, so it's loading quite a lot of images in memory. And that's actually faster for us. So we had uh, we have the height, image height, image width, mean standard deviation, that's fine. So this remains the same, uh, the length. And then you need to change this part. So image will be self.img array and item comma all okay and everything else looks fine let's also pass an image id self dot image ids item and let's just add it here image id this IMG ID. So you got the data set class, a little bit modifications, but not so much. And now you can start generating uh, your model predictions. So you do model dot model is uh, you load it the same way. So I can just take this one. It was ResNet 34 and ResNet 34 pre trained equal to false you don't want a pre-trained model and then if you if you have used model dot data parallel you have to do the data parallel thing again it doesn't matter but you have to do that otherwise you have to change a lot of things uh, and it's going to throw an error so it's just better if you just do model dot data parallel before loading the state dict so load state dict and then you have torch dot load and path to the model so single model so dot slash input so you have to create a new data set with all the folds in it and you can say so here i'm showing like okay you have created a, a data set bengali models and here you have full rest net 34 underscore full zero dot bin and you can load it like this and then you put it in eval mode so once that's done you can now start generating predictions so to generate the predictions you have to do okay for there are four different files um for test and f what you have in public is is very small but you have the same format in private and uh, your code is going to run on private so you say okay for file id x in range 4 0 1 2 3 you read the file pd dot read parquet and this is going to be your test file so test file is located inside uh, this folder and test image data 0 so dot dot slash input slash bengali ai cv19 that's the name of the folder and test image data underscore file idx dot parquet okay so you've read the data now you create the uh data set so data set is doing all the data set test and here you have df equal to df mg height equal to mg score height mg width width mean is equal to model underscore mean mm, std is model underscore okay so we got all that now we create the data loader so data loader will be torch dot utils dot data dot uh data loader and then you pass in data set uh, batch size is 
test batch size then you have shuffle to false very important and num workers you can also have shuffle to true because we are loading the ids but it's just better if you keep it to false so now we need to load the image and get the predictions so for batch index comma d in data set right data set uh, your image is D image and MG ID is D image ID and now you need to convert it to you need to put it in your CUDA device so image will be image dot two device d type equal to torch dot float mm, okay and your grapheme vowel consonant is model image now you have that so now what you want to do is you have to do some kind of arg max on these so your g will be np dot arg max so it always starts from zero so you have to choose a class uh, in this specific competition you have to uh, predict the class not the probabilities so we got g v c okay so we have the image id we have g v and c so what what we can do is we can create a list here predictions is a list and we can do uh predictions dot append um Or I will write a small loop for this for I in range for I I comma I am ID image ID in enumerate MG ID because it's also a list now dot append I am ID comma G I I V I, I, it, this can be done in much better way C I I, but I'm just being lazy right now uh, and so you got the predictions and then in the next step you say okay uh, what is your submission file now that, that, that's all you left to do pd.dataframe um your predictions columns will be row id that's the format of uh, our predictions and target okay so i did something wrong here okay um your predictions dot append so let's take a look at the sample submission because i don't remember okay so you have test zero consonant test zero grapheme test zero vowel okay so you have to do you have to do it a little bit differently so you have to say okay my i am id image id underscore grapheme root comma g of ii and you have to do it for all of them so vowel diacritic so that's v and c will be consonant 
Okay, so now you have everything in proper format. So row ID and target, and then you do sub dot to CSV dot dot uh, sorry submission dot CSV name is important and index to false. So one of the steps that I have skipped here is uploading these models. So you can just go to add data and go to upload and select which files you want to upload and uh, you can name your data set here and everything will be fine so uh, select all the dot bin files and put them here and once that's done um, commit won't take much long uh, a long time uh, it's a very small test set for public but for private it's going to take a while so if i think uh, can take a while uh, depending on how many models you have one more thing that i have skipped in this inference file is to uh, use all the folds so you need to modify this and put it inside number of folds and run the same thing again and again you also need to uh, select the model so instead of fold zero fold one then two three four when you have all of that you just take all the probabilities for G, V, and C from all the folds and you average them and then do this after that. So I'm gonna leave that as an exercise. But yeah, it's a um, pretty, <coughs> pretty cool competition. And if you follow uh, what I've shown you here, uh, you might as well get a very good score. So getting something like 96, 97, 0 0.96, 97, 98, between 96 and 98, I would say. So you can get that kind of score. You'd need to think of a few things. So I'm not giving away all the secret sauce, I'm not giving away any secret sauce at all. Um, need to see the different kinds of model you can using this code it's very easy to train different kinds of model and you can also ensemble different kinds of model and uh, with that i would like to stop and um, i think that's that's all for this uh competition and if you have any doubts questions if i've missed something then please let me know and let me know how I can improve and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much.